This is our molecular biology lab where we extract the main component from cell to understand the activity, such as DNA, proteins, and RNA. And uh, we analyze them with different machines. We have a bit of a, a little robotic things for doing fast extractions and things like that. And of course, when we have other machines, then to analyze those things, this is, for example, real-time PCRs, which is used to uh, understand the level of a specific gene expression into cells. And uh, of course, we, we do a lot of uh, extraction of proteins, where we look how, again, those genes are translated into proteins, and then how these proteins can be changed by using the right approach. And then we have um, also a facility for um, then analyzing cells into large numbers and uh, sort them in, in terms of uh, certain markers by using, for instance, uh, cytometry. So this, this machine here, which is being sponsored by EPSSC. So now we go to another lab that we have, which is our cell biology lab. Here is where we deal with the living cells. And um, of course, we have access to many different types of tissues, mainly human, where we basically um, culture them, expand them, and then analyze them as, as they respond to our nanomaterials, and now we can control certain biological activity. So all of these facilities you see there are sterile hoods where you can actually culture cells, grow them, expand them, etc. Then we have a, a series of uh, imaging units. This is, a, you see here, is a quite an interesting one. This is a high content confocal imaging unit, which is uh, uh, basically um, a, a microscope that can Im image things by fluorescence, but also it can be programmable in order to do imaging automatically. So you can analyze many, many samples in one go. So you can actually do screening and functional exercise. Of course, everything is based around checking those cells are alive. So we have incubators where we culture our cells into those wells and then make sure they are healthy and ready to do what they're supposed to do. And of course, the students and postdoc, they always check on them, on their viability by looking at them under my optical microscopies and then see whether they move around, they're still alive, etc. So, here we've seen, uh, these are brain endothelial, which are being exposed to our nanoparticle, which is designed to go and target the blood brain barrier, which is the main gate for getting inside the brain or central nervous system. And these have been treated for uh, an hour or two exposure, and then we look at the nanoparticleization within the cells by having the particles being, for instance, the labels. So you see here that the, the microscope is going up and down in focus, showing the full extent of the volume of the cells. And the blue uh, bits are actually the nuclei of the cell, the DNA of the cells. So this is one of the applications, our nanoparticles. We're working now to the other lab, probably the biggest lab in my, in my group, which is the, the physical chemistry lab, where we do most of our preparation on nanoparticles and characterization of nanoparticles. So here is we have a series of equipment for measuring, for example, fluorescence emission, like a fluorimeter here. We measure the uh, size of those particles by using light scattering techniques. So this is actually a real-time measurement of this. And then we have a UV spectrophotometer then to analyze how the absorbance and the optical properties of those particles are. Here is a nice example of one of them. See, and the human eye, they look like milk. And milk actually is a solution of particles. And therefore, is a good example, uh, it's a good indication when if the solution got crowded that we actually have those things formed. We, of course, have um, an area of the lab where we process our particles, so, so clean them up to avoid the contamination with dangerous chemicals, and then we make them ready we're going into more biological analysis, so therefore we remove any type of contamination, bacteria, etc. And we do that, of course, using special flow system equipment, but of course, also making sure that the preparation of our particle happens in a sterile environment. So these hoods here that you see there is actually for making those things in, in a sterile condition, avoiding un unwanted contamination. Of course, we work with many, many samples, and we produce many different formulations, so we have a kind of multiply these things as, possible, as, as much as possible. And we do a bit of chemistry as well. 
So when we need to modify our system, such as uh, to introduce specific ligands or to make our system a little bit more in a 3D sort of fashion, we have a different approach and we have a very basic chemistry facility here. So here is a good example of our combined uh, phys physics, chemistry and biology together. So what we are doing right now, for example, we're using our nanoparticles that are used for therapeutics agents, but also to deliver probes into cells. So in this particular case, we delivered them into human dermafibroblasts, which are cells found in our skin. And then we can label those cells in such a way they become very much visible into fluorescent microscopies and then study how these cells arrange themselves in a very complex 3D environment. So those are snapshots of a three uh, of light cells which are then being reconstructed into a 3D rendering where you can actually observe the, the morphology and the behavior of those cells in real time and, and therefore gathering more important information about the biology.